Welcome back. I am Elizabeth and back there is Captain oh. Dan and we are the Florida fishing couple. Today we are offshore Key Largo. We are at a patch reef and we are going to start this day by getting in the water and trying to find some lobsters for dinner. If that goes well, then we are going to head offshore and do some trolling, but it's pretty hot and you know our theory about the fish running later in the day. So we're going to get in the water first and then do some uh, additional fishing later. Yeah. We can't do any spear fishing here because technically we're still in the park so and we're within three miles of the shore so there'll be no spear fishing but uh, maybe some lobsters and some good sights yeah cool. so we might even find a new hogfish uh, place to fish for hogfish oh yeah we we like to fish rod and reel for hogfish lots of people um only spearfish for them but we have good luck with them on rod and reel so maybe we'll spot some Several of you have commented on our recent diving videos where I've been wearing uh, these dive skins and here's what it looks like fully zipped. Uh, this is a, it's called slip in surf skin and they have a ton of patterns and colors. Uh, absolutely amazing, super comfortable. They have them for men and women. Captain Dan has one also, uh, but he's not quite such a baby as me. I like to wear them all the time and he typically will do a dive skin when it gets a little cooler. So he'll wear his in an upcoming video, but lots of you have asked. It is a slip in surf skin and they've been a dream to work with. We really love them and I'll put all their information in the description box below if you want to check them out. Yeah, we're about to get in the water. So uh, you know the deal. Follow us. us.
Oh my gosh, I don't think he's a keeper anyway. I don't either. But good eye on me. <laughs> good eye, babe. Nope. Oh, rat. Good eye. That was excellent teamwork, babe. You you got him so bad and I was out rocking and I just kinda like nudged him, nudged him. <laughs> Good job, Danny. <laughs> Nice job, baby. High five. Nice job, baby. You it snagged was, that dude. It was good teamwork, Danny. It was really great. Great, great, yeah. great snag. That's dinner right there. He's got yeah. a big enough tail for both of us to share. <laughs> All right, let's go to another spot and hit it again. Yeah.
Good eye. Let me have your measure. I don't have a stick. It's all you. Bums out there, far away, but so we're gonna try to troll on the way back. We just kind of get cleaned up, got changed. Great day so far. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, I mean, that just has some serious lightning out there. All that, oh, looks like old Tavernier is like getting oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Getting pounded out there. We're gonna head in the opposite direction, so don't follow us into the storm. We're not going. We're not going into the storm. <laughs> Alright, so we did a little fishing. We didn't do too well with that, but we had a great day, a little lobster. So, yeah. And then we'll go back and uh, let's go have some dinner. And I think we'll just take them along. Follow us back to the. Back to the kitchen. Back to the kitchen we go. We are back home in the kitchen, and this evening I am going to teach you how to make lobster ravioli. Now, this is one of our more complex recipes, but don't worry, if you are someone who likes shortcuts, stay tuned because I'm gonna share with you every single shortcut I know on how to make this recipe absolutely delicious and quickly, no matter what your level of experience. So the first thing we're gonna do is boil two lobster tails, and these are almost done. The only thing I added to the water was garlic powder. Pro tip, don't overcook your lobster. That should be a given anytime you're cooking seafood, but especially in this recipe, because we're going to have to boil them again once we put them in the ravioli. So you wanna be sure they're cooked through, but not so well done that it turns into a hockey puck. Rinse the lobsters in cold water because you're going to have to work with these here in a few minutes. So we need them completely cooled off. So we're gonna help them along the way with a little cold water. Here are all your ingredients. We've got lobster, flour, eggs, roasted red peppers, a lemon, some garlic, heavy whipping cream, ricotta cheese, butter, 
pepper and cayenne pepper. With this set of ingredients, this recipe is going to be rich, but fresh and bright. It's so delicious. Everyone in your family is gonna absolutely love it. We are going to just take these shells off. I'm using a pair of kitchen scissors, but you can do it any way you want. Now this one's a little bit dirty on the inside. We're gonna clean that out completely before we take any further steps. And there we go, good as new. Okay, now we are going to chop both of these lobster tails into pretty small pieces. And here we go. You'll see we have a few larger cut choice pieces over here. You definitely want that. You don't need a lot but you do need some. So we're gonna hold those on um, towards the end, but this is what these look like. All right, we've got our chopped lobster, our finely chopped lobster in this bowl. Then we have the lobster that we're saving for later in a separate bowl. I'm gonna put both of these in the refrigerator for right now because we're about to make the actual ravioli. If you are not someone who feels like being adventurous and making the ravioli, you can just buy cheese ravioli from the store. That will still work for this recipe and it's one of those easy shortcuts that I talked about but just hang in there with me. It is so easy. It's super simple to actually make the dough. So just follow me and I bet you can do this too. It's so easy. You're gonna use one cup of all purpose flour and it has to be regular flour. I know in other recipes I've told you, oh, sometimes we use the keto flour because it's high protein. Sometimes we use this, sometimes we use that. That is not the case here. If you are making fresh pasta, you have to use actual flour. And we're gonna use two eggs. So one cup of flour and two eggs. If you are making tons of pasta, then that's the ratio. Two eggs for one cup. But quite frankly, this is gonna go a long way. Here's what we got. This does not have to be exact and you also don't have to sift it. So one cup goes in. Now we're gonna make a little well in the middle and we're gonna put our eggs. Now we're gonna take a fork and we're gonna basically scramble these eggs in here and at the same time, draw down some of this flour. Just keep kind of whisking it, stirring it around. It's gonna get very thick. See how it's already thickening up here? You're just gonna keep going in a circle. I also turn the bowl. Now you can use a stand mixer for this, but there's just something that brings me back by doing it by hand like this. All right, see, whenever you start getting this crust around the bottom, that's how you know you are good. We are gonna move over to the kitchen island and you need basically a surface that is flat and clean. So I already washed this and now it's dry. So I am going to put some flour on this surface to make sure it has like a non-stick quality and then we put that egg right on top. For this part, we don't measure, we just shake it out on top and we're gonna spread it out, kind of like this, and then we're gonna put our pasta right on top. We're just gonna sit it right on top. Then we're gonna take some of this flour and sprinkle it on top, and we're going to lightly knead this. Uh, kind of like if you're making bread. You don't wanna overdo it, but you've gotta make sure it's not sticky. And you're just gonna turn it over a few times on top of itself and what you're doing is essentially getting rid of the sticky part of the egg. See how it still has that right there so we add a little more flour. When it starts getting like this where it's a little stretchy, you're gonna put the flour all around it and now we'll grab a rolling pin and we're gonna start in the middle and pull towards you and then go back to the middle and push out. And come to the side and pull towards you and push out. You've got to get this pretty thin because when you think about when you're eating a ravioli, it's not super thick. 
see the thickness here. It's pretty thin. That's what you want. You can easily buy one of these uh, ravioli makers, but we're gonna go old school. And I have a glass, literally a glass cup uh, for the kitchen. And I'm gonna use this and we're gonna make half moon raviolis. So like, you know, mini tacos. Um, but we're gonna use the full circumference of this glass to make our actual raviolis. We're gonna get it as close to the edge as possible. We're gonna push down hard and then shimmy it so that it actually cuts the dough. And what you'll see is this perfectly round little cutout from the cup. So then we're gonna get as close to the edge as possible, again, on all sides. Push down, scooch it around like this. Now you have ravioli number two. I'm gonna continue doing this until there is no more pasta. Now we're gonna pull up all of this extra and put it on the side over here in case we have more filling than we have raviolis. And here's what we have. You see the extras over here. We could re-knead this and roll it out if we need to. We have 14 total. I always like to have an even number. Sometimes it works out that way, sometimes it doesn't. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lift these up gently. And you'll see I've added some flour over here because we are going to lift these ravioli shells, if you will, off the counter and move them over here so that they can rest. And that might happen. You see how that just kind of shrunk up We'll put a little flour on there, we'll shake them down, and we'll just let them rest for a few minutes. That's fine. So some of them have a hard time lifting off, but look at this one. No problem at all. And it's perfectly round. We'll just put them over here. And you'll see, like, this is that one I showed you at first. All you have to do is kind of smush it back out like this, or even take your rolling pin and re-roll them now that they're cut. Here's a pro tip from years of getting this wrong. You see how we've got the pasta stuck here? You wanna scrape all of that off completely while you still can before it sets up like it's cement. And you wanna ensure that you get it off the counter and in the garbage before you even attempt to re-roll this out because otherwise it'll all stick together and it'll be a huge mess. So flour is fairly inexpensive. I mean, is anything inexpensive these days? But all in all, flour is inexpensive. So just scrape this off into the garbage can and start over if you're gonna roll out that remaining dough because you need more. If you don't, you're gonna ruin the whole thing anyway. So just trash that flour, put fresh flour on there. I am someone that gets anxious when there's a ton of clutter around. And this meal is one that can destroy your whole kitchen. So what I like to do is take just a second to clean up along the way. That way there's not a huge mess at the end. Okay, up next, make the filling. We are gonna take that lemon we have and we are going to use a zester and zest a tablespoon of lemon zest. And that's about what it looks like. Obviously you wanna wash the lemon first, that's really important, and don't cut it yet. Uh, zest it when it's whole. You'll see about, this is about as much of the zest that's missing, the rest of it's still there. We are gonna keep that on the side and in a skillet, we are going to heat uh, one tablespoon of unsalted butter. We are turning this into brown butter. Brown butter is something that is talked about a lot in recipes, but no one really explains what you're looking for. So when you melt the butter, you'll see it kind of looks foamy like this. And once this foam subsides, you will start to see brown specks in the pan and it'll smell nutty. That's when you know you've got brown butter. So this is not it yet, but there's a very fine line between brown butter and burnt butter. And what we're looking for is brown butter. Oh, you see right here? Here we've got these brown specks. That's done over there when you start turning it. Oh, there we go. See how in the foam it looks brown? Immediately turn it off and that is your brown butter. Now we're gonna take that lobster that we had earlier, throw it in here while it's still warm and give it an old stir. We're ultimately looking to coat the lobster with the brown butter. And because the lobster's cold, it's also gonna cool off this brown butter um, a little bit. Not enough to re-solidify it, obviously, but it will stop it from cooking and it'll prevent it from burning. What's also gonna happen is, because we're evenly coating all of this, every piece is going to have that nutty, 
rich brown butter flavor. Now I'm gonna take about a half a cup of ricotta and this is what I use today. Normally I use Greenwise. I actually prefer that brand, but this is what Publix had, so this is what we're gonna use. The important thing to know here, it's full fat. Don't get the partial fat. It's not worth even doing. Just get the full fat. We're gonna add this half a cup of ricotta into our chopped lobster. And again, none of this has to be exact. So there's the ricotta. And we're gonna go ahead and scrape in our lemon zest as well. We reuse this uh, parsley flake container uh, that we had, but this is actually from our garden. So we're gonna add some parsley flakes in here. This will give it a little flavor, but it's mainly for color. And Captain Dan loves parsley, so obviously we're gonna use it. You wanna be sure this gets completely incorporated in. So we're gonna stir, stir, stir until it's totally smooth and incorporated. Look, you see there's no like white spots where it's just ricotta. There's no big blobs of, of green parsley. It looks totally uh, incorporated. Now what we're going to do is put this back in the refrigerator while we make our sauce. Okay, for lobster ravioli, you can use a myriad of different kinds of sauces. Uh, Alfredo sauce is great, a vodka sauce is great, but the sauce I'm gonna teach you how to make today is so simple and so delicious, you are not gonna want anything else. So the base of this sauce is roasted red peppers. Get a jar of them. Um, I like this one, which is Flora roasted red peppers, has very few ingredients, basically roasted red peppers. And um, in addition to that, we're gonna use some heavy whipping cream. We're gonna use some garlic. We're gonna use the um, lemon that we zested. We're gonna use the juice from that. And we are gonna use cayenne pepper. I just use my blender. Now I have a smaller blender attachment. This one, you can use this one, but you'd have to do it um, probably in stages. Instead, I'm gonna use the Mac Daddy to do this. Now we might not need all this sauce, but I'm making it anyway. So we take the entire contents of this jar, straight in it goes, straight in. This, this Ninja will pulverize anything, probably a human hand. So uh, I don't worry about chopping them down. If you've got a blender that's a little bit weaker, you probably wanna chop those down, but I'm not worried about it in this bad boy. I'm gonna take half of that lemon and squeeze the juice in. And then we're gonna blend just that. Because we are using heavy whipping cream, we don't wanna turn this into mousse. So we're gonna blend this first and then we'll add the heavy whipping cream. When it gets to be fairly liquid like this, we're gonna add in two cloves of garlic. and then blend that again. Now we're gonna add in half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. If you don't like hot, you can leave that out or just add in like a dash. It really does make the flavor more complex, but if you don't like hot, just drop it. Just don't even add it. And one cup of heavy whipping cream. And then you're gonna blend this. If you have a low setting on your blender, put it on that. Ultimately, we're just trying to stir this. <laughs> And that'll do it for me. I'm not trying to overdo it. I just wanted to be stirred all the way through and it looks like it is. Okay, before you put this in a saucepan, you've gotta do a little taste to make sure you don't need anything because this sauce really can be customized to you. So I'm just gonna do a little dip in here. That is so good. The roasted red peppers give it almost like a smoky flavor, but not quite smoky from the roasted part. And the cayenne pepper obviously spices it up a little bit, but the lemon brings in a nice fresh flavor to it and this heavy whipping cream really cools it off. So it's perfectly balanced, I love it. If you're someone who uh, typically cooks with uh, quite a bit of salt, you could add a little salt to it. I'm not going to because I think this is perfect the way it is. So what we'll do now is we'll transfer this into a sauce pot where we can heat it up. We're gonna wait until we fill the raviolis to make this warm, but I just wanted to get it ready so that it's already staged and ready to go when we are. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. Uh, I let those raviolis sit around too long. I could tell it was too crusty. So I had to start over from the beginning 
and I did it exactly the way I showed you, but I want to show you something now, and that is, look, see how pliable this is? That's what you want. So if you find that you let them sit around, you can let them sit around, but not for too long. If you find that they're crusty and not pliable, just start over. It was worth it because otherwise it just wasn't gonna happen. So, you know, we'll always be honest with you. That was a fail. Don't let it sit around too long. That's your lesson for the day. Okay, back in action. Flimsy, that's what we want. We're gonna roll it out a little bit to stretch it. Then we're gonna get some filling. We're gonna put it right in the middle. And we are going to, and we're just gonna pinch it around the edges. Oh, that's doing so much better than it was before. So we're gonna pinch, pinch, pinch. Make sure it's totally sealed, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna touch it too much, and handle it. So once it's sealed, no, no little holes. Now we're gonna set it aside. Looks good enough to eat. If you find that it's too floury. This is a perfect example. This edge is too floury. You need it to look more yellow, more doughy. And if it's not, what will happen is the dough will not stick to itself. So let's say that you've got this, uh, you've got the filling here, uh, you have the right amount, everything looks like it's gonna be perfect. And you see how white this is with flour. You go in and you start to put it together and it's, it's just not sticking. What you do is you come over, you get one, one finger wet, and you just kind of work off that flour, and then it makes it like glue, and then you can stick it all together. Now, of course, I did overfill it too, but we will make do. That's what you do if, it, if you find that the edges won't stick and you see how it's perfectly sealed now, a little water goes a long way. Just one finger, drop of water, that solves your problem. So we've got a large pot of water boiling. We added a little bit of uh, Celtic salt to it. And then, remember the sauce that we made. Now we've got it on as well. I have it on the lowest heat possible and we're gonna warm this up while we are waiting on the water to boil. We are going to uh, gently place them in and they sink to the bottom. Whenever they start floating at the top, you know they're done. Now, whenever I added all these in here, of course it cooled off the water. So I just cranked it back up. It's gonna bring it back to a boil and I am gonna just give them a little swirl so they don't stick to the bottom. Cause that's what they look like and when they all start floating at the top, then we know they're done. We strained the raviolis very carefully. We had one break. I feel like that's fair. I did plate six ravioli for Dan, and now I've got six ravioli for me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this amazing sauce on top. Then remember that lobster that we kept aside earlier. We put it in the little jar. I took it out and I warmed it up. And now we're gonna just place it on top. So we have like three pieces each. Put a little crushed red pepper. Now remember, we put the cayenne pepper in there. So we don't need a lot of hot pepper, but we do need a tiny bit. And then we're just gonna garnish with a little bit of parsley. We have the parsley inside of the raviolis, but on top, it just looks so lovely also. And then, we're just gonna top it off with a little fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Okay, Danny. I feel like I'm in a five-star gourmet restaurant. Lobster on the top of this thing. I have a nice piece of bread, garlic bread. And this is just, it looks fantastic. So these are the lobsters that we just, that we just caught. Yeah. Man, it doesn't get any better than this. Mm.
this. We haven't had this. You haven't made this in a long time. I know. All right, ready? Was that just was that just the ravioli skin? Okay, listen. Here's the deal. You could open up a restaurant with this. This is so. This is so good. Wow. This is really. Oh, I'm sorry. What is the sauce again? I know you showed everybody, but it's, I don't know what the sauce is. It's roasted red pepper. Show, show me that. Ravioli. It's roasted red pepper. Look at that. Look at that. Roasted red pepper. So it's not tomato based. No. 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 I, I, oops. <laughs> Suicide. All right. I'm, I'm gonna eat this. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. What do you think? Man, listen, there's a million ways to cook lobster. But this has got to be in the top three. This is awesome. This yeah. is absolutely, yeah. I don't remember it being like, and we, I don't, I don't remember having, having it last time. It was time. a long time ago. A maybe. long, a long time, time ago. I think we were just dating. So yes. You were trying to impress me, and you did. <laughs> That's what reeled them in, ladies. So I'm not saying, I'm just saying, is it a lot of work to do this meal? Yes. <clears throat> but is it worth it? Well, you be the judge. I'm just saying. Yeah, this is, this is pretty, uh, this is, this is a way to cook lobster, boy. Look at that. Very nice. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. I am down. 100%. Describe it. How, okay, if you had to describe the flavor, how would you describe mm. it? Well, you know, believe it or not, it tastes almost like there is a tomato base. Now, maybe it's psychological because it's red. And the, first of all, the raviolis are great. So you did a great job with that. And it's lobster <laughs> instead of ravioli. <laughs> what can I say? It's freaking, it's awesome. And then I take my little bread and dunk it in the sauce. You like that sauce, huh? I, the sauce is really good. You're going to have to explain to me how they... Like, like I said, I didn't watch you make it. I know you showed everybody so they know. But to me, this is, it, it, to me it's almost like a light tomato uh, uh, like base. But it's not, you tell me. There's right. no tomato in this. Not at all. All right, well, this could, this, this could suffice for pasta nights. Huh? So, I'm just saying. You know me and pasta, once a week at least. So, bon appetit. This is great. Um, I, lobster ravioli. Come on. <laughs> Who do we think we are? No, let's see what you think. Okie dokie. I didn't even eat the, the, the great pieces of lobster on the top yet. I, isn't that a great? Isn't that That's a great? A great yeah, that was smart. I like that. Yeah, that was that was brilliant. Okay, so I cut the ravioli. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be more critical than Dan. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Okay, all right. I can see, I can see here that uh, the pasta is cooked all the way through. I wasn't sure, so key here is let them float. Because it is egg noodles, you do want it to be cooked all the way through. So this is cooked all the way through, and I'm just gonna go for it. Go for it, go for it. Great, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, the ravioli is thicker than you would get if you used a pasta press. So they have got those countertop pasta presses or the ones you can put on your um, stand mixer. I didn't, I didn't use that, right? I, you saw me roll it out. So it could be thinner, I think, and um, it's so delicious. So remember earlier in this video, I told you, if you were someone who liked shortcuts, I would give it to you. You could, have chunked all of the lobster this thickness, right? And then just bought yourself some uh, cheese ravioli, cooked up cheese ravioli, made the sauce from scratch, chunked up the uh, big pieces of lobster, done the brown butter, and then put it on top. That's the easiest way to do it. In a pinch, if it was pasta night and Dan's like, oh, I want that recipe you made, but we didn't have a lot of time because quite frankly, this took me two hours to make. It actually took me longer because I had to re-roll out the, the noodles because I let them sit too long. But in fairness, it takes two hours. If you don't have two hours and you want a quick shortcut, buy cheese ravioli, cook up the big chunks of lobster in the brown butter, make the sauce, and it'd be very similar. Not the same, not the same. This is definitely worth making if you have two hours to cook it. Yeah. I, I, you think if, so? If you don't mind doing it, 
then I would say it's worth it to do it. If you're in a pinch, like you said, you can get the you can get the pre-made yeah, uh, cheese, cheese ravioli. Ones. Cheese ravioli would be good. And then I would probably shred up the lobster and put it in your sauce. And then when you pour the sauce all over it, the shredded lobster would be in the sauce. So either way, but <laughs> it's really good and I'm gonna eat it. Anyway, we are on our way out of here. We gotta clean this mess up. It's not a you lot. You know what? I That's something that went. nobody ever talks about. I cleaned as I went. I did talk about it. It's still it. a mess. It's not that big of a mess. It's a lot better than it was. No, I know, but I'm just saying, you still, what, you know what? When all the catches and cooks that I've ever seen, because we watch YouTube all the time too, I've never seen anybody ever clean it. We should do a video on us cleaning up. I would up. watch that. Are you kidding me? That'd be hilarious. Cleaning up the kitchen, zippity doo dah. Anyway, okay, well, right. okay, let's get with it, please, sir. All right, anyway. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. We had a really good time making it. It was great diving. It was great uh, diving together. Yeah. You had your new skins on, right? Yeah. It was, was kind of cool. Looking pretty yep. hot in that thing. Slip in surf skins. We'll put the uh, the link in the description box below. I really love them. Next video we make, I'm going to wear a new one. So oh, we'll okay. see. I really love the one I have if it's great. And uh, it really just protects me. So I love it. We need something. You need something. Uh, typically, um, you know, when it gets a little chillier, I'll start wearing something else. Yeah. Too. But it protects us from the, uh, well, a lot of stuff, the coral. Yep. Uh, the, the sun. The big jellyfish. Oh, or the small jellyfish. They like spout out their little We've been nasties. getting some really big yeah. ones lately. So, and anyway, so you made a great dinner. I really appreciate that. That was Thanks. an awesome, awesome dinner. Hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed the recipe and if you have the opportunity to try it yeah please let us know if you try it let oh, us yeah. know how it goes because we would love to hear if you made changes or if mm -hmm. you know it, your trials and tribulations or if you made it and it was perfect oh, yeah, we yeah, want to yeah, hear yeah. about it yeah yeah anything else and uh we're always open for new fish and or lobster recipes you know i'm not a real big fish guy so I'm always into like new fish recipes that were. Nope. Yeah, so if you have a favorite way to either make lobster or fish, please drop it down, yeah. make a comment because we read every single one of your comments. Believe it or not, sometimes we get hundreds and hundreds of comments on our videos, but we read them all and we try to reply to them all. I think we get, I think yeah. we get to them. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we get to these at days. least the initial ones. Yeah, in the old days, in the old days we uh, weren't so good, but these days we at yeah. least reply once to every single comment. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're, if you're hitting us up, we fill up, you know, it's, we should only hit you back, so. Yeah. So it's cool. All right, here's the real deal. We really need, uh, we need the subscriptions is what we need. Yeah, if you are watching and you have not subscribed, thank you so much for watching. But go ahead and subscribe, yeah, right? Go hit the subscribe button right now because it really does make a difference. We need to get the next milestone. So yes. help us get there. Yeah, the please go subscribe. Then you'll always know when we post a video and you'll never have to search for it. And we'll love you more. I mean, honestly. I mean, real. that's the real deal. And we have a ton of great stuff coming soon. We do. We've got some uh, partnerships we're working on that you guys are going to absolutely love. I cannot wait to tell you about them. Uh, different things than we've done before mm -hmm. and um, some merch that has been missing for a while and it's all coming soon so yeah. just stick with us go ahead and subscribe and yeah we love you we love you so much thank you for always commenting and supporting us and yeah well, you know what to do you know what to do follow, follow us, us. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you were gonna do? Yeah, I was. I wanted to come along the side of it. I'm so sorry. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> hey, I guess I we have to edit that out. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way you want to hold them. Yeah. Oh, he's doing a little backflip for you. That was nice. <laughs> Recording. Say hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. <laughs> Sun went down. We got. Thank you for calling us, subs. We love that. But I'm going to teach you every shortcake. Blah, blah, every shortcake. <laughs> no. Blah, blah, blah. Lobster, Elizabeth. Lobster. Larger chut chopped. What's the word I'm looking for, folks? We're burning something, also. Couldn't help it, huh? <laughs> you go. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Oh, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say earlier? I don't, I don't even exist. <laughs> Are you done, Dan? I'm gonna kill you, Dan. It's like four points. Dan!
Stop recording. Boil of water. Blah, 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 blah. That's a. Ooh, oh, wait, on the water. Boil. Boil, boil. You know what? You know what they, you know what they say? A washed pot never boils? No, who said that? That's what they say. They a washed it? pot never boils. Yes. Okay. Just so they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. The water's moving. Gotcha. Why are you so close? Why are you so close? <laughs> oh, why are you laughing? Turn off the camera before I kill you. Why? <laughs> Turn Oops, the there we go. <laughs> You're toasting with the bottom. I have an empty cup. I love that. <laughs> I have an empty cup, Dan, okay? Don't you toast me with the bottle. That was the best. <laughs> click a -roo. Hey, I was saw something on there. Oh, yeah, I bet. <clears throat> Come on in. Why are we twinning? Oh, we are twinning. Oh, that's right. Look. I'm in here. <laughs> Look at us. We're twinning. So Stop this was unintentional. Oh, we just have twin brains, so we're twinning. Yeah. Mahi tournament shirt. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. The Mahi tournament. Tournament. Oh, God. Tournament. Okay, everybody just watched it. Oh, we're back to video. that again? I won that whole thing, by no, the way. You didn't. Everybody said it was no, tournament. No, incorrect. All what right, so let's see about say it is? Tournament. Tournament. All right, so anyway, we're talking about dinner. Dinner okay. was absolutely great today. Wait, start over. Start over. Do it. Jeez. I'm ready. Wow. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Come on. I started. Oh my God, why is this so hard for you sometimes? Oh, well, because you're putting me on, on the spot. You saw that. Oh, we're gonna, oh, that's what we're doing here. We're saying goodbye. Yes. All right, so goodbye.